Got something a little different for you guys today. I'm gonna to be going over how I created my Diva remix for Bishu and Monster Cat's uh, remix contest. He just released his new album, Micro Celebrity. They ran a contest to promote it. I'm gonna be going over the track I submitted for the contest. This video is gonna be broken up into seven sections. And at the end, I'm gonna be going over my mastering chain and how I do my gain staging. By no means am I a professional. Hopefully I can provide a little insight to the newcomers or maybe people just have a few questions, so let's get into it. Before we start this video, if you haven't heard the track yet, you can listen to it at the link down below in the description. I would appreciate it, helps me out a lot. All right, so to start off, we're gonna take a look at the intro. The original stems, you know, we got bass, some drums, the guitar, the leads, and the vocals, right? So I think the main thing that really like stuck out to me that I, I liked was the vocals. So I kind of just went with that and uh, stuck with it. That's kind of how I built the foundation of the song, I guess you could say, and uh, kind of got my idea for how I wanted to, how I wanted to go with the remix. Uh, to start here, I have this little so yeah, to start here, I have this sample of the vocal and all I did really, I put this crystallizer on here and um, automated just the, the mix and the regenerate knob. And I think, yeah, a little bit of this as well. So it's pretty much just, I didn't want it to be too overbearing. So I kind of like boosts up and then cuts back down. And then at the end, I like to automate it back up and it kind of gives it this, like after it finishes, it gives it this like, like, I don't know, you'll have to hear it. Yeah, it expands out really far and it's like all the grains are, I don't know how to explain it. It sounds really cool. And I put a little bit of echo on there too. That's also being automated. So uh, yeah, so that's the main part of the intro. And I've also got these hats fading in and a little riser here nothing too special uh, these hats are just a loop i found and honestly if i could go back and change it i would I got a little lazy with those but it is what it is and then i just have this impact uh from my virtual right pack that i reverse and use this riser so yeah that's the intro very basic so after the intro we cut to this uh we bring this other vocal in and I have a little drum beat going. Uh, I haven't brought the kick in yet. It's only the snare and the hats. And, uh, I have this other impact too, just to help carry you through uh, this section of the song. But yeah, this is what it sounds like. So what you're hearing is just this vocal. It's got a lot of filter on it and some OTT. Got the guitar from the stems uh, with some effects on there this like pad and then this lead have those all playing together and this is what you get oh there's also some chords piano chords here which i have panned out to the side a little bit just using analog lab for that and uh this uh serum patch pad synth Thought it sounded pretty and just put some compression on there stuff like that i like to add to kind of like it makes everything feel a lot bigger like the think of the space you're in it's like a lot bigger but yeah and then after that uh we moved to this like pre build up section i bring in a different vocal here and it is it's warped a little weird. I tried to cover it up with some reverb. It worked a little bit, but I uh, ran out of time to get that perfect. And underneath that, I just have another layer that's pitched down an octave and uh, pushed out to the side with some compression and it's filtered down a little bit. And you can, you can really barely hear it, but it's just, it adds a little bit of uh, like another layer to that vocal. Yeah, so I kind of stripped away all these different big synths I had going. And uh, this part was more, it was more uh, empty, I guess you could say. And I just brought the brought the kick in, the snare with the hats playing. Yeah, then I started to bring this re-space in. 
that, that was actually playing during the last section too. Yeah, I cut it down and I've got it fading in. Kind of helps lead us into the buildup. And uh, before we get to the buildup, I got a few, I got like a, I, I turned my drums into a little fill here. You combine the clap. Yeah, and uh, just a little riser again, uh, layered onto another one. Once again, just having those risers and the little drum fill just add some variation to help carry you to the next section of the song. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, intro section overall. Yeah, so let's move on to the build up. So for the build up, I think what I did originally was I took this vocal sample, which uh, you all know it if you've heard the song. Yeah, it's just that sample and then I've got it kind of chopped up at the end and then the chop changes here. I've just got some compression on there, and hue, uh, reverb, the reverb slowly increasing towards the build, a little bit of soothe, and uh, this little radiator effect I've got on here. And I actually cut it off, yeah, right before the end, but it kind of just makes it sound a little dirtier so that when you get here it's clean. Uh, right before you go into the drop and i thought that sounded nice but i've still got this uh, respace playing and um halfway through the build i shift it up one octave and then again right before the pre-drop uh same with this big synth i've got playing here so oh see it's much much darker here And then the octave shifts up and I also bring the riser in about that same time. Uh, just, it builds some tension there and then I do the same thing again here. Just very simple, build a, build a little tension before the drop. Um, as far as my drums, it's just simple. Got my kick, four on the floor. Layered with my snare and this clap. And then I double it halfway through again after that. Uh, and then I've got, on my kick and my snare, I've got a frequency shifter, and this last section I just bring the frequency up a little bit, just to kind of, I'll show you. Once again, it just helps build that tension, and I've also got an auto filter on here that's filtering out all the lows. Oh yeah, and on my drum bus here, I've just got a Pro MB, just some multiband compression, it helps my drums kind of cut through the mix a little bit and oh uh, as far as the effects go i just have this virtual right riser um and these impacts bursting through throughout the entire buildup. right at the end there i just got this vocal repeating itself and a uh, little kick let you know what you have, uh, let the listener know what to expect, right? But yeah, that's pretty much it for the buildup. Nothing crazy. Yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the drop. So the first thing you're gonna hear when the drop starts, I'll just play it for you. So we've got this bass that kind of fades in right here. It's just this serum patch I found and I kind of modified it a little bit. Um, some auto filter, a bunch of compression. Uh, I got a little bit of overdrive on there just to make the high end a little nastier. This imager isn't doing anything. It's just for reference. EQ, uh, some side chain and this trance gate. You can hear it if I play. And then this auto filter is just Coming in slowly, and then we get to this part, which kind of carries you into the B section of the drop. Um, this is just another serum patch I found and uh, modified it. Once again, EQ, compression, uh, I got a phaser on there just to make it a little wider, and it, give it gives it that like wonky sound when it's coming in. Saturation and some more compression, and a little EQ just getting rid of some of those harsh frequencies. 
Uh, and I've got both of these um, grouped together uh, with another glue compressor just to help them like level the volume out and glue these two sounds together so they don't feel so like they don't stand apart from each other so much. They're, they're kind of meshed together. I mean, it's in the name, the glue compressor. I just have this one kick and I bring my sub in a little bit here, which this is just an operator that I added a bunch of uh, effect. Um, just got some compression, a little bit of amp, overdrive, more compression EQ, and I'm pushing it into shaper box, and it gives, I think it sounds better than, I've got the snare roll that's kind of fading in, with a riser, a couple of these little trim shots are layered on top of this bass. Yeah, that's the full beginning. And I also have this vocal kind of fading in. I forgot about that. But yeah, then we get to the B section. This part, I wanted to come in really heavy. So I bring this bass back uh, without the transcape and without the auto filter, of course. That is hitting on top of the sub right here with a kick. Layer it all together. It sounds like that. And then I cut my sub out right before my snare. It's something I like to do just so the snare, like, it's a little more punchy and it kind of pops out. And I bring the vocal back in. There's also this lead. Oh, that doesn't come back in until afterwards. Kind of forgot a little bit. Yeah, that's the whole B section. And then we come back to this A section. Um, I just, I brought this bass back in. Back with the transgate, layered over my sub, of course, and got a fun little drum beat going on here. And I put these rides in there just to help uh, fill up some space. There's another riser here, and that helps transition you back into the B section. And then I brought this back, but I actually flipped it the opposite direction just add a little more variation and that's something you'll see throughout the entire through the second drop as well and then you know we go back to the b sections the same as before pretty much the same it's a little different i think i changed the vocal just a little bit the drums have a little bit of variation here just to make things interesting and i bring the snare roll back in to help carry you to the second half of the drop and I cut my sub out too, just so that way the next part comes in that much harder because, you know, you lose your low end here and you bring it back. Simple, you know, just sounds better. Yeah, and then the second half of the drop is the same as, you know, the, the A section here is different, uh, but everything else is the same as the first half. And then right here at the end, there's just a little variation, once again, you know, to keep things interesting. Yeah, that brings us into this breakdown section after the drop. And I like to keep the energy going after the drop. I don't like to just build, you know, have all this energy and then immediately kill it right after the drop. So uh, I've got this vocal again. It's got a, I've got a separate, separate layer here. Uh, for my drop vocal and for the regular vocals just so that I could kind of change how the vocal fits in with the drop because it was kind of tricky getting everything to mesh together. Really it's just got some reverb, saturation, compression. I don't know, this is kind of weird the order I have this in, but whatever, it works I guess. Limiter, more EQ. I don't know, When I guess when I was making this I would just, <laughs> looking back this is way different than what i would normally do um ordering my effects wise but it, i guess it worked so that's all that matters oh uh one thing i forgot to mention with the drop um so if we go back to this this part you can hear there's some reverb in there so during these sections Just, uh, it's nice to add some reverb tills in there just so that it 
helps fill that space up, you know? Like, you want to create space for the other, other elements, but you also don't want it to be empty, right? So that's just a good good way to do that. But yeah, back to the uh, breakdown section. Um, this lead is still playing. Got the same reverb. I think the only thing I did different here was I filtered it down some, or I made it quieter, something like that. And uh, I bring this re-space back in just to, you know, make everything feel really big again. And then this vocal is going again. It's the same vocal, just got some different processing on it. Switch up the drum beat a little here and uh, change the sub pattern to uh, follow this Reese bass. Yeah. And I bring this clap back in. So all that together. If I take it out of solo. And then the second half, I like to kind of build it back up again. Um, so I'm just, I bring my four to the floor kick pattern back in with the stare and the clap and, you know, build that tension. And then right before the end, I cut my drums and I take, uh, cut the riser, of course, and uh, I take the lead and I just pitched I just pitched this one part down yeah so you have this high energy section and then I pitch this down and it kind of like brings you back down into uh, the bridge pretty much it for the breakdown and the drop section and I uh, will go ahead and start talking about the bridge All right, so for this section, I wanted to bring that vocal back in from uh, this section. Um, so I brought that back in. Oh, actually, that's the next part of the song. <laughs> right here, uh, I wanted to have a little like intermission almost, just like, I guess you could say like calm before the storm, you know? So everything gets kind of calm. Uh, I bring the guitar back in with this same pad as before and uh, throughout this section I'm fading this this bass from the original stems and this fading that re-space back in but other than that, you know, I took all the drums out. Uh, I've got the piano going to keep that like kind of mellow vibe. These big impacts. And everything starts fading in. So we bring the vocal back in, uh, it's pretty much the same as the build up section right over here. Uh, and I've got this vocal for the build up fading in underneath it, just like last time. The only difference I think is this bass is playing. I don't, I don't remember if that was before. And I still have all the drums out. Um, I've got these big synths going with the piano uh, just to keep that, keep everything feeling like very large. And yeah, then that just fades into Oh, that sounded rough. Yeah, we've got another little riser there um, and uh, a little bit of a drum fill just to carry you into the build up. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the bridge. Let's move into the second drop, why don't we? The second drop. Um, I'm a little more proud of I think it it sounds a lot better and it kind of flows better than the first one but yeah so after the build up you know you have the vocal everything cuts out for a second it's got a bunch of reverb on there and then I cut all that off right before this bass comes in and it just comes in hitting really hard with the sub and the kick and I've got a little bit of a, just a little glass break effect layered under that to give it a little bit of, uh, you know, give it some depth. Yeah, 
I mean, it's pretty minimal, to be honest. So the vocal comes back in. Right on the snare, I cut the bass out. And then the this bass comes back in just, I don't know if it's a whole octave. Yeah, a whole octave up. And then I bring this back. The, it's just the same bass from the first drop. And I've got that lead back in. And that kind of just has a little conversation with this bass here. Just a little variation of the uh, drum pattern. Overall, the drum pattern is very minimal for this. Pretty much the same. The only difference is I added this kick here. And I've got these rides, once again, just to help fill up some space. And these little rim shots I got going on uh, on top of this bass here. But I mean, other than that, it's very simple. Got a couple of little risers in here just to, once again, help carry you through the the drop keep things interesting add some variation uh i think the only other thing that i really uh, change up throughout this drop um i think i changed the pitch yeah so i've got i i um adjust the pitch a little bit on the vocal and this lead once again, like I did before uh, the bridge earlier. And just like I said before, it just keeps things interesting, adds a little bit of variation so that you're not just having to listen to the same thing over and over and over again. And right at the end, I just, like I have been doing, just adjust the pitch of that a little bit. Just to, you know, let you know something is about to change. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the second drop. We'll go ahead and talk about the outro too, because, you know, it's nothing crazy. Kind of the same thing as I did uh, previously. After the other first drop, you know, I have this other section to kind of keep the energy flowing. Changed up the drum beat a little bit. I brought the respace back in and this vocal. And then the drums cut out. I uh, lose your sub bass and um, start fading out the Reese. And, uh, you know, everything starts to get more empty. Um, but I bring these back in with the piano just to kind of give it a little bit of a melancholy sound. Just got uh, the reverb going up on uh, this vocal. And uh, I put a little bit of these Bishu samples from his RPS pack, just just to add a little flavor uh, right at the end. And um, yeah, that all just fades out with this whole section. See, it's automated down. That's pretty much uh, the entire structure of the song. So yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get into, um, talk a little bit about uh, how I did the gain staging for this and my mastering chain. All right, so I'm not going to get too in depth with this because there's plenty of other people out there that have made much better videos and know a lot more than I do that can explain it way better than I can. But basically, um, each of these buses are sectioned uh, depending on the type of sound, right? So, you know, I have a section for my vocals, um, I lead in my bass, um, which is mainly just your sense, right? Uh, this group as uh, just another group I have for my synths. Um, then I've got my sub bass and low, all my drums here, and then all my effects there. And down here you'll see I've got a few different uh, buses 
or I mean, they're just like tracks that other tracks are feeding into basically. So you've got your chain group, chain hype, chain basic, and the pre-master. I actually discovered this when I was watching <clears throat> the video on YouTube for Skrillex's uh, Moon by Power. If you haven't heard it, it's a great song. A few different people made some videos breaking it down and uh, how might have done his game staging. And I pretty much copied that format and I uh, used it for myself. Like I said, I'll link the videos down below of uh, the other people explaining it because there are a lot they know a lot more about this than I do. Pretty much just has his vocals going straight to his master. And that's what I've got going on here. My lead and my bass all goes to my chain basic. And uh, all of these buses, uh, the chain hype, basic, and the pre-master pretty much have the same thing. It's just EQ with a limiter, okay? So with my chain basic here, like I said, it's on my lead and my bass. I've just got it EQ'd everything below 100 because I don't want that uh, piercing through uh, with this limiter. I was using Pro L, but I started using the base Ableton limiter because it sounds a lot cleaner. Probably just because my Pro L settings are not the best, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do this for now until I find something that works better. So this chain basic, you can see it's feeding into the chain group and this chain hype is also feeding into the chain group. So what we're doing is we're taking the sub bass and pretty much the rest of the elements of the song other than the vocals and the effects, and we're kind of gluing them together in this chain group. This uh, chain group has an EQ, which I haven't done anything with. You can if you want. Uh, it just has a limiter, and then it has these compressors here, which are compressing off the kick and the snare. Doing this just, you know, you take every element of your song, and you're kind of gluing them together by compressing them or side-chaining them this way with your kick and your snare. You kind of have to dial these um, EQ settings in depending on your kick and your snare and whatever sounds the best to you and these ratios you don't want to go too hard because you end up like making your entire song sound it just sounds super compressed and bad if you if you do this wrong it sounds really bad you take that chain group and that goes straight to your master uh, and then i also have this pre-master here which is pretty much just all the drums and all the effects once again just got another eq i'm boosting the highs a little bit and then yeah that goes to my master so for my master uh, like I said, I got this format from uh, other people breaking down Skrillex's gain staging, and uh, he uses a camel fat, and what was recommended is you turn the compressor all the way up and just adjust your mix knob, so that's what I'm, I'm doing. And uh, I'm actually automating this throughout the song, so during my drop, I'm compressing it more than the rest of the song, just to make it, you know, sound even louder and hit even harder. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a lot of compression, just a little bit to make everything a little louder. Uh, this imager is just here for reference. Um, it's not actually doing anything. Uh, this EQ here is just to cut all the lows from the side. And then I've got another EQ here. Uh, all this is doing is cutting everything below 20 and above uh, about 20,000. Um, just because you can't hear it anyways. And it just kind of like muddies up the rest of your mix. Uh, my Ableton's actually crashing now. That's okay. All that's left, I got another limiter here. I got a span and my mini meter just to help monitor the track. I highly recommend, um, if you haven't already, uh, get some other tracks that you like, reference them, and uh, using plugins like these, you can get an idea of you know how they have different levels for different um, elements of the song and everything. Kind of gives you a um, goal or something you want something to uh, work towards, you know what I mean? If, uh, if you like the way it sounds, you can try to model your spectrum based on theirs. That is my mastering chain and how I do my gain staging. Like I said, I will link some videos down below on other people who explain this way better than I ever will be able to. I recommend you go watch those pretty much it. That's going to be it for the track breakdown. Hopefully you guys learned something. You can listen to the track on Label Radar. Links down below. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. Uh, maybe you just learned that I suck at producing. That's fine too. Uh, it's the first time I've made a video like this. I really enjoyed it. Subscribe if you uh, want to see more content like this. And leave a like if you liked the video. You don't have to, but I would really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.